Right, guys and girls, and welcome back to the channel. You join me on a, a rig making session. Me and Aaron fished uh, Milford on sea last night, and we've I lost a couple of sets of gear, so I'm going to make some new rigs. Um, we had quite a good session last night. We had two small eyed rays, one form back ray, a spotted ray, and a dogfish. Unfortunately, I didn't take the camera with me last night. I wish I did because it was an absolutely cracking session. Um, and hoping to get back down there very soon. And then next time I'll take the camera with me. I was really gutted. But I will put some pictures in this video. Right, so let's get making the rig. So the rig I'm going to be making is a pulley rig. Now I have made a pulley rig previously. But I'm going to make another one because obviously I've got... The, the camera equipment is a little bit better than when I've made it previously. So let's talk about the components that I have here. Right, so the first component is the pulley bead. What I'll do is I'll stick that in my hand. So that is the pulley bead there. So you'll need one of them. Right, there's a choice of bait clips and all that, but I'm using the Genomai Splashdown. Um, there's loads of bait clip ones, you've got the breakaway leads, there you've got the clip on it, you've got breakaway imps, you've got the um, breakaway off the cut, off the ground cast um, bait clips, um, and I think that's it, I'm not, uh, there's a couple of others but I can't remember what they're called, you'll need a swivel, uh, obviously you need the business end, you know the hooks, this is a 2 or a 3 -0. That's a Frio Chinoo. Um, I've got a bit of uh, rig tubing to slide over the hook so it goes over like so, like that, like that. Um, I'll show you why I use that in a minute. It's a bit fiddly to put on, but we'll we'll I'll show you how to do it. Um, I prefer fishing it like that. And then we've got a couple of eight mil beads. Hopefully the camera focuses, and we've got eight eight mil beads. No, the camera does not want to focus. It wants to focus on my hand. So yeah, there, there's the 8mm beads. Um, this is the rig body. Now the rig body you can have from 2 foot long to 6 foot long. You know, it's up to you, your personal preference. I just do uh, from the length of my arm to the tip of my nose. And give it a little bit of extra. Um, and then you need some nail clippers or scissors to clean the tag ends off. So right, let's uh, get making the rig itself so this is a um, hundred pound uh, line this is going to be my rig body uh, I always use between 80 to 100 pounds uh, it's preference because obviously the type of casting I do you know I want everything you know strong and I don't want it to break off right I'm just gonna move my chair back so we're gonna start off with the Genomite splashdown and I'm going to tie, obviously tie the line to the splashdown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the line through the eye of the splashdown. Fold the line over like so. Excuse my fingers, they're a bit dirty. Uh, so I'm going to wrap the line around three times. Put a little bit more line. Three times like so. So it looks like that. Then I'm going to pass through the back of the loop, so I've got the loop here, so I'm going to pass back through it, push the tag end up like so, grab the tag end this end, and then I'm going to pull it a little bit tight, pull the rig body towards me, then I'm going to go back through the loop, so the tag end goes through the loop like so, once, then twice, so it looks like that. So I'm just going to come out of the camera for a minute, put, use my teeth to pull the tag in. Bear with me a second. So it looks like that. So then I'm going to apply some gob oil. Bit of spit, yep, yeah, it's well lubed up. And then start forming a knot. As you can see, it's going to start cinching down and what I like about this um, 
it's not is the tag end comes back up to the main line as you can see like so it's a very strong knot it's never let me down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the nail clippers now you can trim the tag ends after I like to leave a little bit of tag end just in case the knot does slip so it's not going anywhere right so now we're going to go up to the other end and we're going to start putting the components in so I'm going to use my 8mm bead and I'll pop it over the line like so okay so we've got the 8mm bead then we're going to go for a Monsieur Pilly bead and then now I'm going to explain why I'm using these beads like I'm using four beads and I've got this off of um, another gentleman that does YouTube videos um, I'll tag his uh, YouTube channel in the comments below so so it looks like that so far I'm going to use four beads normally I use three beads but I'm going to try four beads and you'll see why I'm using the beads in a minute so you don't have to do it like this you can just use two beads like so but I'm going to use four beads and I'll show you why so we're going to pull them down to the splash down then we're going to get the swivel like so so we're going to do the same knot again form a loop go around three times like so then back through the loop back through the loop pull the tag end pull the rig body go back behind like so once and twice now I'm just going to go off camera I'm going to pull this with my teeth just to pull form the knot a bit of gob oil and then start forming the loop like so um, you can use um, the like breakaway leads they've got the lead clip you know the clip bait clip on it you can put it on there and then you can pull the knot tighter so as you can see that's starting to form um, so yeah so we we'll start from the other end again we got Jen Moy splashdown eight mil eight, uh, la, la, la. eight mil bead you can use the smaller beads a pulley bead another bead so you, you can fit, use uh, like use it this style pulley bead and two beads either side obviously I've got the extra beads here I'll explain why in a minute and then we got the swivel obviously this will attach your hook length to it well, I'm just going to grab the hook length. Bear with me a second. Right, so this is the uh, hook length I'm using. This is the VAS from Vils Mail Order. I've always used this stuff from Vils. It's good stuff, good quality. It's never let me down. This is £60. I like to fish with £60 um, hook snoods. So I'll just put that on the floor down there. <clears throat> right, so what I'll do is I'll clean this tag end off. Yet again, I will snip off so much. In a minute, I'll get a lead and I'll pull that a little bit tighter because that's obviously not gone tight. So then we'll get we'll attach the hook length to the swivel. So we'll we'll do the same again. So it's like that. Pull the line so it's parallel to each other. Go once, twice, three times, back back through the loop. Pull it like so. Go once, twice. Can be fiddly this knot. But it is a good knot. So it looks like so. 
Now I've lost my end. There we go. Now I'm going to use my teeth again. Well, actually, no, I'm going to use my fingers this time. Pull it tight. Bit of scob oil. And then, once the camera focuses, pull it tight. Come on, camera, focus. And then we start pulling, form the knot. There we go. So we'll clean the tag end off. So it looks like that. So now we work out how much line to use for your pulley. So what we do, I like to attach a lead to this and then just pull it down. Obviously come all the way up top. So now I'm gonna explain why I like using these beads. Now we're all tangled up. Right, so what we'll do is we get this out of the way. So this is how why I like it. So when, when you've got your main line coming down from here, the beads push away so it's like acts as an anti-tangle which is a very good design you know I've, I've only recently started using this as I said I watched someone on YouTube his name's Mark and um, yeah I've copied him cheers for Mark for that video and I've used this and I've not had a tangle since you know just it pops pops the snood away basically so then now we're obviously gonna measure up measure it up so so what we've got to do is pretend you know your main lines coming down and attached on here so i'm going to hold that with my fingers i'm going to pull it down pull it down pull it keep going keep going so this is my hook length obviously this is a splash down so i'm going to cut a little bit shorter then the rig body itself so we'll get that out of the way we'll grab the hook limbs oh kick the camera so now we're going to attach the hooks hopefully the camera focuses there we go keeps focusing on my hands so now we're going to get the hooks so this is a frio chinu this is a varavas hook um, again from veils so what i'm going to do is I'm going to put the hook on like so so I'm going to go through this way instead of going through this way on the eye I'm going to go through this way okay so then what I'm going to do is so the line is parallel so that this part of the shank is going parallel to the line so now I'm going to get my little rig tube and thing I'm going to slide that over the rig, uh, hook length so it looks like that and I'm gonna push the rig tube in now this is this is a pain because it's not this rig tube is not very wide in diameter for this hook gauge of hook so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the rig tube in over so it comes onto the shank now hopefully I can do this first time on camera because it's a bit of a pain um, just be careful you don't pierce it you can use um <coughs> excuse me you can use a shrink tube in. Um, see, as you can see, the point of the hook is slightly damaged it there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this is 1.5 millimeter, I think, or 1.1 uh, 1, 1 mil. But you can get thicker, wider, sorry, wider uh, tube in. So I'm just going to gently tease it on the shank of the hook. So this 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 is going to be a pain in the ass. Excuse my French. Um, so what we do? There we go. See, as you can see, the point's starting to come out now. So be careful. So use your finger now. And go push it, but don't. So you see it sliding over like that. So there we go. So now I will push that round like so. And then I push the, uh, there we go, so it looks like that. So the line is still running parallel with the shank. And then you can slide the hook up and down on the hook, hook length. You know, people do, you know, I used to wrap the, 
the line round like so, like three or four times, um, two to three times. But I've only I've just only started use, using this style of fishing and on my fishing, and I, it's a cleaner. It's you know it doesn't when you wrap the line around it, it damages. It doesn't damage. It just coils the line, and you want your hook lengths as straight as possible when you're fishing. So there's that bit, the old faithful chinoos. So what I'll do is I'll push him up out of the way. And then we go for the, this is the, the business end of the hook. So this is a um, vas hook again. Um, uh, what hook is it? Oh, it's uh, duh, 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 big mouth extra. So it's quite a strong gauge um, uh, hook. You know, there's lots of hooks out there. You know, you've got the shikumas. Um, the oh, what does Aaron use? He uses the mustard Viking, uh, mustard Viking up tied hooks. Um, there's loads of hooks out there, really, but this is my personal preference of hooks. Um, yeah, I've never lost a fish on them, I've never, you know, they don't blunt as quick as like Shikuma hooks. I, I feel my personal opinion the, the Shikuma hooks blunt after a, like a session or two. Um, but these, you know, are very good hooks, you know, very strong, they don't bend. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the hook with the same knot again. Uh, so we're going to form a loop. Um, yep, so I'll get that out of the way. So, same again. I'm going to fold the line over and the tag end over, and we're going to go around three times again. One, two, three. And then we're going to put the tag end back through the loop. Hopefully you can see this on camera. So we form a loop like so. Put the tag in through twice. So we've got a loop like that. Use the teeth to pull the tag in. So it looks like this. Bit of gob oil again. Focus camera, focus, so we go down slowly. And then we got, and then that's what I like about this knot, the line or the tag end always runs parallel to the, the line itself. The, now you can, so what I'll do is I'll leave a little tag in. So you see this little tag end here? So if you're using a worm bait and fishing for like stingers or anything like that, if you leave the little tag end, this will puncture the side of the ragworm or any fish bait, depending on how you put the baits on, it will act as a stop, you know, initially. And But you can cut it right down. But I like to always like to leave a little bit of a tag end just in case the knot slips. But I've never had a problem with the knot slipping. And yeah, this is how you make the pulley rig. So what we'll do is we'll pull that down. We'll pull this down. Twisty there. So now, that's your hook ends. So as you can see, the line's still going parallel. Because obviously this is a pulley panel. Going parallel for the shank. I like to fish my hooks like that. Back to back. You know, if a fish comes in this end, or a fish comes in this end, I've always fished like that. I, I don't, I don't normally, I don't put my hooks like that. I like to turn it like that, so it looks like that. So yeah, that's that. So we've got the hooks. We've got a little bit of rig tubing, sixty pounds hook length, uh, swivel. Then we go down to the bottom of the rig. We got four eight mil beads, but as I said, you don't need to have four beads. Uh, four beads, you can just use two beads either side of the pulley bead. And then we've got the um, genuine splashdown. So what I do is I just clip the uh, rig up quickly. Um, well, hooking my shoe legs on my shoe. So this rig is a brilliant rig if you're fishing snaggy. Snaggy grounds because it pulls the lead, so the lead comes up to towards your main line, and the fish is at the bottom. 
so this is it clipped up. It's a very high air di I'll get my words out. Air dynamic dynamic rig. You know, this flies out, you know. I've never had a problem. The only thing is with the Gemini splashdowns, sometimes when you cast, if you um if you hit it too hard and you naff your cast up, sometimes in midair it goes pop and then you you'll it comes unclipped. Which is annoying sometimes. It doesn't always happen, but it's very annoying, especially when it, when the fish is out of distance. So with the with the splashdown, obviously the hooks go through there like so. We get there eventually, and then you slide the paddle down. See the, like, the little to tooth bit? It clips in like so. So then obviously your leather be attached to here. So it looks like that. You pull it down, focus camera, and then we come down to the pulley bead section. So, so it looks like that. So you got your pulley bead, your beads, the other side, and then once the hook is deattached, and you have a fish, what will happen is. When the fish takes it, the pulley bead will slide down, your lead comes up by your, so, so that's, that. sorry, I can't come back to this. So this acts as your anti-tangle, and then the lead will be at the top, so the pulley bead will slide down. Obviously your fish a bit well away from your lead, like so, so you, you just imagine the pulley bead and all that up where the lead is at the top end where the main line is and your fish is down here so your lead is well out of the way and it's a very good rig I've uh, caught many a fish on it um, it's very easy to tie as you can see I tied it in probably in within uh, 10 minutes if that um, you know you, you, obviously you can have different lengths of rig body as I said previously two foot to six foot it's totally up to you. You can use a hundred pound, eighty pound. You know, it's totally up to you. But just remember, every, every ounce you use is every ten pound. So, six ounce use sixty pounds. But I wish you go up a bit. So I use seventy pounds. Uh, seven ounce lead. So I use a hundred pounds. If that makes sense. Um, I wish you use um, sixty pounds for my hook lengths because rays have got uh, like. Um, they're like bristle pads and it rubs on the line, you know, smooth rounds as well, you know. And you don't want to lose a decent fish. Um, another thing, I'm gonna, another tip I can give you, when you um, put your, say when, obviously you're gonna put this on a rig winder, when you wrap it up, wind it on your rig winder, and then when you go to use the rig, obviously your hook lengths are like, you know, like that. What I'll do is before you uh, put any bait on it and cast it out, just run your fingers down the hook length just to straighten it all out because that's key. Or, you know, make sure your hook lengths are straight. Every time you cast, just, just check your hook lengths. And if it's got like a little kink in it, just uh, run your fingers up and down or run it across your trousers, you know, just to get obviously it's memory free or whatever it is you know you want it straight so then the hooks are straight you know what I mean if that makes sense so then the hooks stay there so there's you know straight and then that's it so that's that rig made so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch off the camera and I'm gonna make a up and over rig um, up and over rig Aaron was using last night it was absolutely killer rig he landed obviously all of his fish on the up and over. I was using the pulley rig for a start. I unfortunately caught nothing on the pulley rig. But then I changed over to the pulley dropper and then obviously I managed to catch a spotted ray and a dogfish. Yay, everyone loves dogfish. Woohoo! Um but yeah, he his rig was, you know, spot on, you know. He absolutely killed me last night. So yeah, I'm going to make the up and over rig. Obviously, I've made the up and over rig before. 
uh, but today um, hopefully it will be a better quality video than the last previous video so yeah I'm going to switch the camera off and then we're going to get making the up and over I will catch up with you in a second well, as you can see I've got the, the components for the up and over rig now so they're slightly different components for the rig so first of all we'll go with this so this is a genie bent clip as you can see so what happens is it will sit like that the line will go over the the bent part of the clip and then go down towards your lead so that's the gen uh, um, genomite genie bent clip obviously you'll need a swivel to attach to your main line okay now same again I'm using the um, genomite splashdown but I'm using a link clip with a swivel so this bit so the line passes through there you have two beads either side of it so it allows to flow up and down on the trace you can just use the line to go through obviously through the um, splashdown but I don't like to fish it like that because it gets caught up and it's there's a bit of resistance there if that makes sense and then obviously we got the two beads we have another swivel um, bit of rig tubing again focus camera and then we've got the same hooks again the old faithful chinu and the, uh, the bottom hook so obviously this is going to be a panel and then so for the rig body you want about three foot long um, I normally fish three foot long I don't know if you can I don't, I've never fished it longer so it's three foot long for the rig body so then it'll be double that because it's doubling over so it'll be six foot long hook, hook, trace, hook length sorry so yeah let's get tie into it so it's pretty much the same again tying it like to the um, pulley rig uh, this is the rig that Aaron was absolutely smashing me on last night but he was only using a single hook instead of a panel hook you know, it's so you can fish it single hook or with a panel you know it's totally up to you I prefer to fish with a panel because obviously obviously you got to, you know fish coming in this way fish coming in this way you know nine times out of ten the hook when the fish grabs the bait nine times ten nine times out of ten the fish is on this hook and not that hook so yeah let's get making the up and over rig so we will start off with the uh, genomai bent clip and with the swivel obviously we're going to tie the line to this part so we're going to go down again same process as the pulley rig we're going to go around three times again still still the same three times once twice three times back through the loop as you can see i'm going back through the loop like so pull it with the tag end back through twice so it looks like that use my teeth to grip the tag end bit gob oil pull the knot down like so clean the tag end off obviously leave a little bit if you want to or you can cut it right down it looks like so, like so come down to bottom ends and then we'll go for a bead now you don't have to use a big bead like mine you can use the small beads so we've got beads then we're going to go for the splash down and then the uh, clip so put the swivel through like so then we go for another bead like so so we pull that down so it looks like this so we've got the uh, obviously the bent clip with a swivel on it bead either side obviously that's running up and down the line so that's like a running ledger rig, like, like that sort of style rig come down the bottom end now we're going to attach the uh, swivel so we can attach the hook length to same again with the knot do 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 we go once twice three times like so get the tag in 
pull the loop in, we go twice through, if I'm going to go through, use my teeth, pull the knot, there we go, that's not going anywhere, the tag end off so yeah so yet yeah, again this rig is very very simple and easy to tie it's very quick you can knock these up very quickly on the beach if you lose tackle so we'll go through the components again the genomite bent bait clip obviously your swivel uh, your rig body mine's a hundred pounds but you can use 80 pounds use whatever one you like Bead either side, obviously the running ledger sort of style. And then mushy swivel. So what we'll do is we'll get the hook length. Now this is quite going to be obviously a longer uh, wrong, longer hook trace. Obviously it's three foot rig body, it goes over so it's near enough five foot, six foot long, something like that. So let's attach it to the bottom of the swivel. Like so. Like so. Same knot again, three times. I do apologise if you can hear the road traffic noise. I live on a very busy road. So it looks like that. Use your fingers, pull it tight. No, use my teeth. Bit got oil. I wonder if the camera will focus on it. There we go. Let's see if it focuses. So, you see, there's the knot cinched up. Like so. Right, I'm gonna just gonna turn the camera off quickly and put the lead in a on a so you can see it from bottom to top. That makes no sense, but you'll see in a minute. So I'm just gonna turn the camera off for a sec, and then I'm gonna get all set up to obviously tie the hook on. Give me a minute. Right, so obviously I've attached the hook length to it. So this is what it should look like at first. Right, it's quite a long rig, so I'll bring it in. So I've attached the lead. Obviously you can see the bottom of the swivel. The beads acts as a buffing, stops it rubbing from against the knot. So I pull it down like so. Put the lead on the floor. And obviously we've got the uh, do, 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 do. Right, so this is very very fiddly rig let's get the fishing line out of the way so obviously let's get that lead over there a bit further so now obviously the line's coming up through there and it folds back over the uh, bait clip start pulling the line towards me like so here we go here we go be so much better if I had someone doing the camera so I'm gonna stop about there to the swivel get me nail clippers so now we've got a very very long hook length so obviously that's what it looks like you got your swivel your hook length this side two beads either side obviously this is the rig body Rig body, rig body, rig body, bait clip, and then you swivel. We move this out of the way, and then we've got a very, very, very long, very long hook length. So we go, do, 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 hook length, hook length, hook length, hook length, hook length, hook length. As you see, it's very long. And then we've got obviously attached the hooks. With the up and over rig, I'm not keen on using it on fast flowing tides. So if the tide's flooding in, you know, if it's a big, big tide, I'm not keen on it because it does, so it can tangle up. And obviously, when it's tangled, you're not fishing. But you can, add, um, you can add like an anti-tangle sleeve, you know, like rig tubing over the eye of the swivel so then it kicks it out like carp fishing you know when a carp comes along and picks the boilie up and rejects it 
the anti-tangle sleeve throws it back out. Same principle really with sea fishing. So let's attach the hooks. The hooks is the exactly the same as are attached on the um, pulley rig. So I'm going to go through the eye like so. The top of the eye instead of going that way. I'm going to go through the eye like so. Pull the line through. Get the uh, rig tube in. Pull a bit more line. Get the point to go through. Look at that, that's much easier. Let's see if I can do it first time. Get your finger now. Push. Pull the line like so. Why is it people start doing cutting up things when I'm doing trying to do a video? Right, there we go. Look at that. Pull the line through and then start feeding it over. I do need to get some um, slightly bigger tubing, I think. There we go. Work it round. Work it round. Now I have split it. It's not the best rig tubing. Yeah, I've split it. But it's alright, it'll still work. Come on. So I have split it. I will take that off again and uh, redo it. But we'll leave it like that for a minute. Let's put it down a little bit more. Like so. And then we will attach the uh, the other hook. Um, you know, if it splits like that, take it off, start again. Um, I'm going to leave it on there for a minute, and then get the video wrapped up. Um, so get the other hook on, like so. Same again. Bada bing, bada boom. See what I like about this rig as well is it pushes your bait well away from your lead weight. And it's a very, very good rig. Same with the pulley dropper, long flowing trace, you know, get it away from um, get the hook length away from the lead. Um So we've got that ends all sorted. We shall pull the hook down. Like so. So yeah, again, back to back. Yeah, I know the rig tube is damaged, but it's fine. Uh, so it looks like that. So what I'll do is I'll just put the rig together and then you can see what it looks like. So it's a, it is quite a long rig. You know the hooks are very you know well away well away from the the uh, well away from the fi uh, blah, 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 well away from the lead. I wish I had an assistant here to hold the rig. What I'll do is I'll clip it up. Clip it up. So we've got it all clipped up. You've got the leads. Uh, we've got the splash down. We've got the hooks. It's all like that. You know, very um, aerodynamic again. This rig. There's a swivel that holds the rig body to the hook lengths. Come all the way down. Come all the way down. Come at this angle, and then your line. That's your rig body, and then your line wrap goes over the bent clip like so, and that's it. Then you're fishing. As I said, once this uh, clips off, it comes off up this end. Your lead's well away. Your bait's here. Your lead's six foot, five foot away from from the you know the hook bait. 
fish comes along, grabs it, bang, 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 pulls the line, takes line, and then it pulls your lead up like so. Fish, bada bing, bada boom. As I said, very good rig. Aaron caught plenty of fish on it last night. Um, a lot of people use this rig. Um, good rig for rays, uh, stingers, you know, any, uh, bass, you know, lots of fish. Well, right, guys, that's the dog barking, so I better go tend to the dog. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, we will be getting some videos out there. We will be getting back to fishing. There's the videos. I won't forget the camera, and I will catch up with you in a bit. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see any specific rig making videos, please let me know in the comments below. And I will catch up with you shortly or later. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in a bit. Bye.